Here in the United Kingdom, there has been a huge amount of media attention paid to the Leveson Inquiry. It looks at the ethics of the media and whether they serve the British public as they should. As well as this, there has been huge Twitter libel scandals and generally a big debate about what can and cannot be said on social media websites. But one big story tends to stay under the radar. And here at Truth Loader, we believe it to be important. Next week, the United Nations will hold a vote on whether an institution called the ITU could gain a significant amount of control over the structure and the way that the internet operates. Now, this is a very, very complex issue, but it affects everyone. So we spoke to Jim Killick at Open Rights Group, who spoke to us specifically about this issue and the wider context of who controls the internet. Well, I think there's a struggle going on. Suddenly, all this information is in all of our hands. Uh, the ability to publish is in every citizen's hands. And if you're a a, a government that, that finds that threatening, um, and I think that's particularly true for Russia and China, Iran and countries like that, you know, obviously they're going to want more control over it and they're going to want to find technological means to restrict the flow of information and to stop their citizens from coming across information which undermines the credibility of those uh, governments and temptations existing even in Western democracies. I mean, it was only a year or two ago that, that politicians in the UK were pa calling for powers to ban Twitter during riots. Basically, there is a power struggle going on and it's between the population um, every citizen and their right, you know, and their desire to be able to express themselves freely on the internet, um, and governments who kind of think that this is either a bit out of control or a great way of finding out more about uh, citizens. There's been fairly informal relations between different parts of, uh, if you like, internet governance, and the United Nations hasn't tried to be the big regulator of how uh, the internet works. And now uh, they, they are making a bid in a way for future relevance. Um, and also countries like Russia, China, uh, Iran are pushing for use, to, to use the um, ITU to create new kinds of regulation of uh, the internet, particularly around things like content um, and surveillance powers. And that has huge implications for free speech, particularly in impressed countries, but it also could just fundamentally alter the way that the internet works over time. So you start seeing in countries uh, much more surveillance. Um, so your information might get stored by foreign governments if you start communicating with people in other countries. Um, you might see uh, websites uh, censored if they don't conform with uh, national regulations. Those are the kinds of things we have to worry about. You know, will websites, will web services be available? One of the big problems with media regulation right now is that there is this sense of mission creep and uh, legal creep that standards that have been designed in the past, if you like, for big media companies uh, suddenly start applying to quite ordinary um, events um, and uh, quite ordinary sort of individuals publishing things on, as I say, their own personal blog or maybe on a platform like Facebook or Twitter. So, you know, there's some, some really interesting issues uh, coming up. And I, I rather suspect a lot of those won't uh, be addressed in Leveson, in fact. Are we missing a trick by paying so much attention to media ethics and libel cases when such a profoundly important vote is being held at the United Nations next week? Let us know your thoughts in a comment.